Welcome to Authentic Living with Roxanne, a place where we have conscious conversations about things that really matter in our lives. And now, here's your host, Roxanne Derhage. I'm Roxanne Durhage of Authentic Living with Roxanne. Thanks for tuning in again this week. Uh, today, I have a special guest, uh, Melissa Hartley, with us today. Hi, Melissa. How are you doing today? Great. Great. How are you today? Good, good. So, Melissa and I have um, been spending, a, I would say, a fair amount of time over uh, COVID together, uh, virtually doing some uh, work as part of a writing group. And, uh, you know, Melissa's was, name came across, um, you know, my desk, and I thought, well, what a perfect opportunity to talk to someone with uh, uh, such massive background in the arena of um, talent management. So let me just tell you a little bit about her, and then we'll jump right in with all the questions that we have. Uh, so a bit about Melissa. Uh, she brings about 20 years experience in designing and delivering talent management solutions for leaders and professionals at all levels of organizations. She's a professional development guru who has a reputation for excellent consulting, partnering, and facilitation skills which have gained her the trust of professionals and leaders alike. Uh, she has a master's in leadership and a master's certificate in executive coaching from Royal Roads University. And she's certified in uh, various um, organizational tool assessments, strengths deployments, inventory, uh, trust mm -hmm. catalyst inventory, uh, Myers-Briggs, amongst a lot of other things. So Melissa, uh, we're going to jump right into things and talk a little bit about your experience um, based on what we're seeing um, out there in the, the corporate world or, or, or associations. What kind of things are you seeing right now in reference to talents with the people you're consulting with or coaching? Uh, I'm kind of seeing sort of two main areas. One where um, people have either been laid off or furloughed. Um, and the trajectory they thought they were on mm -hmm. or hoped they were on, you know, abruptly stopped. <laughs> yeah. And then there's, then there's the, the other folks where, um, they are just massively overwhelmed mm -hmm. day to day. Uh, so they've got to get their regular work done, um, and, and keep achieving at the same level and manage the ambiguity, manage whether it's children, whether it's learning, whether it's, you know, the business processes. So those are probably the two big buckets that I'm seeing out there. So I guess the need for each one would be a bit different if you think about that. The person that's furloughed is kind of thinking, okay, like to your point, um, now what? <laughs> based, mm -hmm. on, based on um, a lot of things that we're seeing in, in the economy. Uh, the person that's at work, um, to some degree, might feel, wow, I've got a job, which is fantastic, but my goodness, now how do I fill the gaps um, and be able to meet this high level uh, of need uh, to fill in, uh, you know, the roles that maybe they've been left behind, not just with their position, but also to do other things that maybe fell out of their purvey day to day. And you said the third group is the person that's kind of trucking along and now is starting to rethink where are they in their career track? Yes. Yeah. And I think e even when you look at those other two, the furloughed and or laid off, as well as the overwhelm inside the organization still, I think both of them come to that point where it's the now what in mm -hmm. my career, you know, it's like COVID presented this, this uh, situation of, okay, is, is this really a good fit? Is this really where I thought I'd be or want to go? So let's, let's talk about each group then and sure. kind of, sure. what are they, when they're coming to you now, right? What, what are the, some of the core things that people are coming forward with now um, that are stuck, that are stuck in organizations, like the ones that you're, you're coaching at present? When they're inside organizations, it's really about helping them 
I would say quiet down the overwhelm, quiet down whether it's uh, frustration, whether it's panic, you know, all those overwhelming feelings, quiet down the overwhelm to then gain clarity. Right. And so, getting clarity at that point, because I would say one would, you know, generally uh, companies have, you know, projected goals. They have a, you know, their, their strap plans all figured out. But what we know is that in this day and age, it's kind of like it's a it's a day to day kind of, you know, kind of week by week where companies are having to pivot based on some of the things that they're being exposed to in their marketplace. So how do people then they're overwhelmed, they're frustrated. Um, we know we don't like change. I don't know about you, Melissa, but most people don't like change. <laughs> yeah, there's certain kind of change I like. Others, I, exactly. It's, it's like I inadvertently dig my heels in. <laughs> right, right. So all those things being said, but then, so I'm trying to kind of function as best as possible, but the business objectives may change week to week, month to month. Mm -hmm. So how are people coping with that frustration? There's one thing to say, okay, I'm frustrated and I'm going to learn some skills. But if I need, if I keep knowing it's coming at me, what do you find has been helpful with when you coach with those people versus some of the people that are coping as effectively as possible versus people that aren't coping as well? And very simply finding and carving out uh, either some small space you know, for some people, it's taking 10 minutes at the beginning of the day. For some people, it's, it's actually just getting grounded with their team. So okay. if you think of, um, you know, uh, a leader trying to find space in this particular situation, it's, okay, everybody, let's have a morning five-minute huddle whether it's by a conference call or zoom, whichever, you know, we know that the video calls and all that kind of stuff is overwhelming as well. Sometimes it's just a five minute call just so that we get each other grounded. We, we get connected. Mm -hmm. So finding what it is that you need to get that grounding, make that space for yourself, whether it's daily, whether it's weekly, just something that's consistent. So no matter what else is going to go on around you, because you know it will, mm -hmm. find that tiny space and keep it. Right. And it's really, you know, I think of, um, you know, different personalities when I coach or mm -hmm. when I speak. And then you kind of think, you know, one thing is going to, some people are good at, um, you know, priming themselves in the morning. Some people just need to be able to um, sit and kind of structure a bit of time, but it's really leaders understanding that maybe people that would, they would have managed or led in a certain way. Maybe that person's even shifted with what are their yeah, real yeah. needs at this point? Because I, I think, I even think of myself, Melissa, and certain things that I used to do. And I think, Oh, this, this works all the time. And now it's like, it's not working anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. Yeah. Be, be open to the, okay, why isn't that as uh, satisfying or fulfilling as it was before? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I think um, one of the other pieces of this puzzle that I'm seeing very consistently is um, many people aren't giving themselves the break to recognize that, it, you know, I think Brene Brown labeled it as we're actually going through a collective grieving. Mm -hmm right? The, the old way, whether it was good, bad, or ugly, mm -hmm. is gone. Yeah. And, you know, we, we've just been thrown into a, a chaotic situation and we have to adjust. Um, and many of us aren't making time to actually grieve some of the old things, even if we didn't like them. <laughs> so that processing of, um, of the feeling. So recognizing it, processing it, then moving forward. So really that's an important factor, right? And, you know, it's interesting is, um, you know, yesterday was my dad's 84th birthday and I went to church with him for the first time in a long time. And what the kind of the gist of, of the talk at church was that we've had so much loss that we haven't stopped to acknowledge the impact of what this this whole concept of we've had so much of it and we're just trying to 
keep it together so we can cope with COVID, but we really haven't gotten to the point point where we can kind of say like honor it, bear mm-hmm. it, let it go because the let it go part, we can't really kind of let it go because it keeps coming back as a wave. Exactly. Right? Mm-hmm. There's another one and then there's another one and there, you know, it's like, you know, you, you kind of think, okay, well, finally we're in phase three. We're going to kind of get through things as much as possible. And then school comes up. And then, you know, and then we see with school what everybody went through to kind of figure out how they were going to um, rejig their lives. And now we're seeing things coming up again. So that that whole concept of collective grief, I think, is it's, it's actually brilliant because it's so true. We think we're yeah. coping, but are we truly stopping? Yeah. And you know what? We probably are coping and we are doing well. We are making progress in so many ways, but it's like there's this parallel engine or parallel train Right. You know, on a on a track that's right beside it has to do with that that whole other thing of the way things were are are not really anymore and mm-hmm. we don't even know and we can't know yeah it so really that's to get people unstuck then it's really about starting there from what what i'm hearing you say yeah it's like we're talking and we're talking about the furloughed we're talking about the person that has gone back and is trying to kind of you know, it's kind of bob and weave and try to figure out how to pivot and adapt. Um, but amidst that, all of that, everybody's going through this kind of what next kind of concept on a global level, yeah. but also, at, at, you know, at a, at a corporate level or even within their lives with their children. So that's a lot of, I often say it's like the moving plates all the time. We try to keep spinning. Yeah, and the back of the bus. <laughs> and it's yeah. like, oh, gee, these those two slow down. And oh, this one's, you know, needs a little bit of touching. So there's really, you know, if we kind of look at it, it is we all are drained. And I often said, you know, to say to people that I'm dealing with now or speaking to that um, we have to acknowledge that that's the reality of what we're, we're working in and try our best to be able to, um, you know, get through it a bit at a time. Now, you talked a little bit about, let's talk about, um, people who feel stuck. Mm. So they're in their role or they're in whatever situation, whether it's for load or within an organization and they feel like they're not able to make progress in their career or their profession. Mm -hmm. That's what you mean, right? Yeah. So what, you know, like with all the things we've just talked about, it makes sense that a lot of people would be feeling like that. Mm-hmm. So, so what do they do? Like, what do they do again? When I, when I work with people, I really dig deeper on this one about, you know, what, what is going on um, that has contributed to them feeling this way. So I, I think there's, there's so many factors Um and, and the one that I've been seeing coming up uh, more often, I would say with, I would say mid-career or younger women, so women in, you know, in the front half of their career into mid-career, it, there's a bit of a, seemingly a bit of a trend around, okay, the external definition of success mm-hmm. is... Uh, contributing to them feeling stuck Mm -hmm. or the organizational definition of success. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, what someone else has defined as the next step or, um, you know, and the mentality is really uh, trying to drive into, okay, is, is it an attitude of lack like that you feel like you're not enough or is it, that it's not a good fit like that you would have to change yourself too much or bend over backwards too much in your career progress to fit and that's giving you the clues that i would think at that point you know Mm. i remember being with an organization and when i started my i would say that i was in alignment based on what i wanted for my career at that time but after being there for about four or five years i was like they, they I had to, to your point, I had to work too hard just to feel like I was like, you know, hitting the ground and achieving a bit. And it it took so much out of me that after a while I was like, I I think I'm burning out here. Mm -hmm. Personally. Yeah. 
And and I I'm I mean I'm very comfortable going in t- into this space with uh, clients and and leaders themselves you know who are even managing people like okay I'm I had this person on my you know uh, next to be promoted list and now they're just it seems like they're stuck how can I help them mm-hmm. and uh, a lot of times it's that burnout. You know, they've been trying so, the person has been trying so hard to fit whatever the, the definition is, the box. Right, right. And then it's, oh, wait a second, I, it's just not sustainable anymore. And that's a tough, you know, I remember with me, because I'm, I'm the type that doesn't supposedly quit, right? So I was, I remember thinking, but well, this stuff was, was working before. And when I recognized that the, the objectives of uh, the company that I was with you know, were, were no longer fitting where I was going internally with my values and where I saw my career going. And I had to be real with myself to say, I think I've, my tenure is done. Mm-hmm. I had you know, gotten what I needed. There had been a, such a shift in the business multiple times over. Like the, you know, the iteration, the last one I was in, I realized I'm no longer in line with my business objectives to stay at this con- company and continue to grow. And I think, you know, I remember being as a, a younger executive, I thought, oh, I just have to work harder. I just have to do certain things yes. much more. And, and it really it didn't matter what was happening. And I'm sure a lot of people that you coach come up against that where, and most of us don't want to kind of sit down and say, is it time to make a different decision, especially in this time, Melissa, I think it would be hard because with us looking at the job losses and, you know, you know, I think in April, they said up to 2 million people in Canada, those types of things. Most people are saying, just hold on to your job. Yes. Uh, yes. Right. Which is a hard thing because we all obviously need to take care of our families and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, with people like that, are, are people making the decisions to meet, leave positions now or are they just kind of staying put until they kind of see what's happening with the economy? Yeah, I, I, I think it's, um, I, I'm seeing more of the people staying put right now mm-hmm. and it is causing, I, you know, I, I tend to refer to it almost as like they're leaking <laughs> they leak in terms of their their energy and or frustration or um and it comes out in other ways but i i can speak from experience as well as one of my most difficult uh moments or it, like if i was to list a few of the most difficult moments in my career they have to do with making that decision mm-hmm. you know if i look at a pattern and, and lay my career out and, and go, okay, every job I've had or place I've been, you know, are there any patterns? And, and I would say that is probably one of my, uh, one of my patterns is that I tend to stay a tad too long. <laughs> I've got the loyalty gene. Like, you know, if you could measure loyalty in terms of a characteristic and who's in the 98th percentile, I'm probably in probably the, right like up I'm, there. Yeah. <laughs> and leaving those connections. I know that was always oh, something when I, so you know, harsh. cause you know, you kind of get into that mode and you do your job and you, you know, you do, you deal with all these things and then you're thinking about making a move and then you think I'm going to miss so-and-so and so and the connections that I've, I, yeah, oftentimes yeah. that was what I have to sit back and go, okay, hold on. I, you know, you can keep those connections with people, but they'll never be, they'll, they'll, some, you maybe have a small subset of people that you might stay as connected to, but you, you know, the professional yes, connections yes. does shift again, um, where, you know, with certain people you might mm-hmm. align to, but generally it does shift things. And I, I know with me, oftentimes it's, I, you know, I'm like you, I'm a loyal person as well. And I, you know, I think, oh, you know, I'd like to stay connected with so-and-so, but then you have to kind of be realistic, go inside yourself and say, you know, what, what's best for me. Yes. So for people that are struggling like you said, because people might be staying put, what kind of things should they kind of look into to be successful at this time in their lives, be it at home or at work? Like what, what, if they're trying to stay authentically connected to themselves, yeah, I'm staying in a job right now because, okay, I'm going to have to weather the storm till I get a little bit more consistency. So what kind of things could people do um, in other parts of their life to stay connect, authentically connected to themselves? Where, many of my my clients and colleagues have gone is finding the places of i'm going to call it energy 
So finding those places of energy, um, you know, a positive relationship. So if you have a friend that just every time you get on the phone, you know, you feel better after. Yeah. And, you know, from a work sense, um, the, there's people that are making very strategic choices about where they spend their time. And it has to do with lining up with that generative energy. So knowing, mm -hmm. uh, learning, if you don't know, learning what is it that uh, gives you that zhuzh, that oomph. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, if it, if it takes volunteering, if it takes uh, having a conversation with somebody just to learn more. Um, it, you know, I know in one of uh, the association that I work with, there's a few people that they're in that difficult place in their career um, and they just want to work more with other like-minded people in our organizational mm -hmm. development community. So they don't necessarily want any fancy you know, um, title or anything like on the board of directors, if that's considered fancy, but they want, okay, well, can I host one of, one of the meetings? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I know it's colleagues. It's like, you know, everybody's just getting together and then having those conversations around the things that you are passionate about or curious about is what creates the energy so those kinds of things. And that's I so think. very important. Yeah. And yeah. then to also on the counter side, I would think, think of what um, I'm going to use a Trinidadian term. Think of the drain pipes, which is basically the pipes that, that take from you. Yes. Yes. Right. Being and, aware uh, of the drain pipes. I love that. Right. And I think, you know, when you're replenished, I often say sometimes you can flip that off a little bit easier. But in this time, you really have to, I, I was talking about, as, um, you know, you know, fill up versus drain out. And really, really right now, we're having a lot of things draining from us, like a lot of, you know, worries with what's happening in the world, what's happening with our families. Um, I know you and I are in a, more in the stage where our kids are off to university. So we're, but for the people that are managing, you know, uh, little ones at home, eight, nine-year-olds and keeping them at mm -hmm. home. That's a lot of give, 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 right? Yeah, you know, yeah. and so, and then, you know, I often s share with people, start to think, what is it? What is, what are the things that help you replenish? And yes, look yes. at from a lens of what is draining you and try to think, um, what can I do? Even if I could do a little bit less of it so I can conserve some energy um, versus trying to cut everything off altogether, which sometimes it's not, it's, it's, you know, you might love to do that in, in, in retrospect, we can't yes. do something like that, but to really try to start to look at it from that lens, which is, I think what you're saying is like, what are those energy suckers and what are the things that give you that extra bump um, that allows you to say, okay, I have to be able to get through um, this time with this difficult project or, or whatever. Um, because, you know, and I think the, the other aspect to that is, you know, even if you're feeling stuck in your career or at work is, a, you know, and maybe you were on a trajectory before, mm -hmm. you know, you felt like you were on a certain trajectory and, and now, right now you're, you don't feel that way <laughs> is give yourself the time to say, okay, right now is a collective pause. Mm -hmm. I don't need to stay on the path. Let myself just step off right now for a period of time so that I can re-energize myself. I like that term, collective. That, that feels kind of, like I, I can kind of sigh and let go, right? Because then that means that I can just accept that this is what is. Yeah. And like to your point. It's nothing that any of us can control. Absolutely. And for some of our driven kind of um personalities you're asking them to take a collective pause and they're like what i don't do that are you I'm kidding <laughs> yeah i, I don't do know <laughs> i tried and it's never worked but really we're in such a different time that it's really like to your point um you know whether it's to volunteer or um you know to spend more time in nature with your kids or those types of things mm -hmm. so what are 
are what it, what are the things that are going to help you buffer through till you can get back to okay this is my plan this is my five ten year plan because of most mm-hmm. people had to you know kind of gently you know say well where I am in this quarter and we're until the last quarter of 2020 you know what can I do to to ensure that I um, get through the last quarter and then you know hopefully as time goes things get a little bit better for all of us yeah leaders that are succeeding and getting I would say kudos for handling handling their leadership well within COVID, if you will, is uh, I've heard several of them saying, you know what, when this first happened, we just communicated out there. Okay, whatever our, our objectives were at the beginning, that's not what they are right now. Mm-hmm. And they... It's the communication of it, I think, that's key. And that's what created the space and the openness for the people that work for them, that are the loyal followers, if you will, um, to say, okay, it's okay to be um, anxious, feeling, you know, having all this ambiguity that's, that's more than anything. And you know, some people are calling it the great reset. Uh, some people are calling it, you know, different things. Um, yeah, at this point in time, I wouldn't say we're at a new normal. Yeah, whatever you that's know, I, I don't, yeah. yeah, I don't, I personally, I don't like that. It makes me, it's, yeah, it means, uh, yeah, like when somehow we know what it's going to look like. And it, it, to your point, I still don't think we do. And I, I've heard this over and over um, with, yeah, with most people that I'm coaching or leaders that are doing it well. I think it's almost like the re, the, there's a reorg that's in place and people are looking at their yearly goals and saying, you know what, to your point, um, let's look at, you know, quote unquote, and we can't even say post COVID yet. Mm-hmm. Let's just throw that mm-hmm. out. Let's just get through. And the people that are leading most authentically from that empathetic space where people can see that transparency from them as a leader, you know, where, you know, the leader that looks to put together right now actually is coming across as so inauthentic that people are finding it difficult to, to have them lead them. Because mm-hmm. if I'm your leader and I, I'm, and I'm not that I'm suggesting, and that's a hard concept for leaders, right? Because why do yes. we put people in positions of leadership so that they have the quality? So we're asking people that generally can do those things to really become more self-aware to be able to say, yeah, I, I, you know, I have been having a tough time keeping up the structure that I had, or I'm finding that I'm having some restless nights, or I'm finding that, you know, you know, my kids are getting a little bit more on my nerves <laughs> lately where I have to leave the house <laughs> to be able to, to get that quiet in my brain. You know, I think that's what I've been finding with leaders that have been doing it well. They're acknowledging, they're reaching, they're saying, um, you know, we're in it together. Um, mm-hmm. Yes, we still have to be able to do businesses, but there is no right or wrong way. I will communicate, 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 um, even when there's not much to communicate. And yes. sometimes it's so good. Even if the communication shifts from directives to connecting. Yeah. Right. And, you know, also that reality, like, oh, I'm struggling too. I'm having some sleepless nights or extra frustration with kids, spouse, you know, right. whatever right. it is. Yep. Well, and, and with with me with me writing my new book, that's what I've been really focusing on is um, leading from the heart, mm-hmm. right? It's like we know leaders have this all these phenomenal capacities, and they're you know if we were to do you know the strengths uh, different kind of uh, yes you do with them, we know without a doubt that they function at an optimal level. But now it's about saying okay, you have to go inside and make yourself more aware of how you function and where's your go-to and maybe what are the different personalities on your teams and what are they needing differently from you as the leader? Because yeah, you are a high functioner that maybe are not feeling it as much as maybe um, parts of your team, but what do those people that are maybe diametrically opposed in your personality kind of perspective, what do they need from you so you could effectively lead them? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So going inside. So 
when, you know, so there's people that still have dreams and they still have yes. things that they want to achieve. And um, maybe like, you, you know, they're wanting to still have that perspective of, okay, I know I can't maybe make drastic um, shifts right now with some of my career goals, but what are some of the things that they can do right now, not to completely put their goals on, on, on the shelf, but to really still kind of work towards achieving certain things with, but not having as high of an expectation based on the time, what kind of things can they do? Um, I, I loved what you just said there about not having expectations based on a time frame. Mm -hmm. and you know for probably the majority of people especially achievers people who have those goals and dreams is the that timeline is kind of what keeps them centered mm -hmm. and what keeps them going and actually creates energy which could be part of what is creating the anxiety right now <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> because we don't have a timeline on this silly thing called COVID. Um, yeah, that whole concept of post-COVID is not really there yet. But anyway, um, I would say that re possibly redefining what success means to you. So I think it was Tony, Tony Robbins. Uh, who said we we tend to overestimate what we can achieve in a year yeah. and underestimate what we can achieve in like five or ten years I think it was him it doesn't matter mm -hmm. it's the concept that matters and and I think if you can uh, if if people who are in that high high achieve if you can kind of create a compartment like I have a dessert pocket so I can have a really big meal dessert. and be really full, but I've got a dessert pocket. <laughs> so, that I sounds think, like fun. I know, I know. It's a great excuse, but <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, when it comes to your career, it's like, okay, I've got this five year five-year plan or this is where I want to be next year, whatever it is, is create yourself a metaphorical dessert pocket <laughs> that has to do with the time. So you can still achieve your dream. You can still achieve yeah. what you want to. It just might not be within the exact time frame that you thought. And that's okay. Because there's 8 billion other people mm -hmm that are not where they thought they were going to be. So the redefinition uh, from that space would really allow you a bit more of like, go back to that, that pause, yeah. right? Like, so it's almost like yeah. you're going to lead from your heart and look at your business goals maybe, and maybe be a bit gentler and kinder, kinder to yourself. From a time um, frame. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Versus it being, you know, like, you know, small, measurable, attainable, realistic timeline, just kind of say, based on this time, you know, how is it that I could be gentler and kinder and maybe um, just accept that we're all going through this together. You will get there to your point. Yeah. You may get in three years or five years, but you're going to get there. And, but, to, but to be, I always say be gentle and kind and compassionate because if, you know, we're so good, you know, and us as coaches, we get that, or myself as a psychotherapist, okay. but guess what? When we look at ourselves and I, you know, they'll, people, my clients will often give this fantastic advice and I will go, okay, well, how come you can give that such great advice to other people? Can you do that for yourself? And I think sometimes mm -hmm. the kindness um, factor is something that people are, we're so much more tougher on ourselves, but to kind of cut ourselves a, a, a bit of slack, like if it was that good friend or that colleague that you really liked and they came to you and they gave you um, the, your dilemma, what would you tell them? Well, exactly. You know, if your goal was to be at, you know, get a director level position, you know, you're in frontline management right now and your goal was to have a director level position by the end of 2020, whatever your goal was. It's like, don't give up on, on the director. Don't give up on that. But 
just morph the part where it says by the end of 2020. Right. Okay. Make it a little bit more open-ended and go, okay, yeah, to your point, the compassionate part is we've had to recalibrate on what we can control and what we can't. So if you don't achieve something by your current timelines, um, you know what, there's a lot of things that have a huge amount of influence that we can't control right now, you know, being the COVID, we can't control how Mm -hmm. drastically people's revenue streams have been changed uh, or their organizational structure Mm -hmm. and all of those things. Those are beyond those are beyond our control. So given that recalibrating go, okay, being director by end of 2020. uh, Okay. I still want director for these reasons. And and that core hasn't changed, but you know what? Maybe it's not as achievable and realistic to, to have that by end of 2020 because of all these things that are not in my control. And that's how I'm being compassionate with myself. So before I let you go, I want you to speak to like CEOs or senior management with all the things that we've talked about Mm -hmm. from that Mm -hmm. level, what, what kind of things should they be thinking about? Let's say, and and we just talked about not giving a timeline, but I'm going to give a timeline, you know, to say in the next couple, two quarters, let's say, right. For senior leadership teams or CEOs, what kind of things should they be reflecting on to meet the needs of some of, you know, the concerns that we're talking about here? What should they be thinking about or implementing to be able to assist people um, in this stage? I think there's a place now more than ever because of COVID to have a space for the employees and or HR partners, if you will, when you think of talent development to have the conversation or just a conversation, like a two-way dialogue. So in the past, you would look at things like, okay, every year we're going to have an engagement survey. We're going to have a team meeting right, to talk about the engagement results, and then we're going to develop an action plan, and then we're going to do it, and then we're going to get better at engagement. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got to drop the action plan and go forward part and just let ourselves sit a little bit longer mm-hmm. in the, let's just have a dialogue. Okay, let's be real. How are you, how are you really feeling? Mm-hmm. You know, how you really, hey, I know you have two young kids. How, how are you making out? You know, do you need help? Is there anybody else on the team that can help? Right. So sitting where you are now, being present. That's what I would say. Being present. Because we don't know the way and it's unfolding daily, being present will really give you the space to, to, to hear in a different way versus, like mm-hmm. you said, being... Um, what's the action plan? Yeah, what's the, what's the end point, right? Now yeah. it's like, we're saying, okay, how about you throw out the action plan <laughs> and you really kind of check in often enough and heart to heart, I would say, really yep. get to understand yep. what your, 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 you know, your, part, your HR partners need, what, what, they, what are they having to, what do they need in place to be able to cope effectively with, the, mm-hmm. with their leaders that they're managing? And then what does the frontline in t- need, in turn, need from middle managers, senior management, all the way up to the CEO? And the other piece of that puzzle might be, uh, be open to look at what's on people's plates and say, what are we willing to cross off the list for now? Right? Or take off the list. Right. Okay, so I have not had an experience with either my own work experience or any client whatsoever that has been able to stick to, these are my top three priorities, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Everybody I know, honest to God, at an individual level, at a team level, at an organization level, has added, you know, 
priority four, five, six, seven, eight. It's like, I honestly, genuinely believe we've got to be able to look at our priority list and go, what's truly one, two, three. Right. Right. Just reprioritize. Yeah. Again. Park. And what, what can, what can we park again? Not forever, but just what can we park? Mm-hmm. I think those that, things alone would create, you know, at a, at a personal level, if you do it for yourself, whether you're a leader, a uh, professional looking for your next step, it doesn't matter. Or whether you're a leader leading other people. Absolutely. That, that's amazing advice. Well, Melissa, this has been fantastic. Um, and I think yeah. it's, it's so just having this conversation, I'm sure uh, most people uh, leaving, uh, if anything, that the two things that I'm doing is the pause Mm -hmm. and reprioritize just three things. Those are the things that I'm taking away. Now tell me. I thought you'd you'd take away the dessert pocket. (laughs) That too, that too. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I always say that you uh, Canadians and Americans have the dessert pocket, the the, me being from Trinidad. I said, I have the savory pocket. Right. (laughs) There you go. I like that one. I don't have the sweet. I have the savory. And I I always say like anything savory, I could, uh, there's a definitely, I have that pocket and maybe that's because I grew up in Trinidad, but uh, you know, I, I always have space for more. So, Lessa, with what you're doing, I know um, you and I have been so fortunate to spend time. We're both writing books. Uh, for people that might be interested in coaching or reaching out to you for some OD, organizational development, mm-hmm. where, can you, where can they reach um, me? So that they can- uh, yes. Probably my best um, where you can reach me is my email, which is evolution underscore in underscore learning at outlook.com and on LinkedIn I have I have the rest of my contact information there so uh, on LinkedIn I'm Melissa J Hartley awesome. H-A-R-T-L-E-Y and we will put all those in the show notes as yes well. Melissa, yeah. thank you so much and for everyone listening uh, if you're ever wanting to talk more about Uh, leading authentically or having that connection as a leader to your teams, especially in this time, Uh, you can reach me at um, uh, RoxanneBurhodge.com. Thanks for tuning in to Authentic Living with Roxanne, creating the space for positive, healthy change. Roxanne is a keynote speaker, psychotherapist, and coach. To work with Roxanne, visit RoxanneDurhage.com slash blueprint. We'll see you next time on Authentic Living with Roxanne.